Yeah. We've got layoffs looming in the banking sector now. We've talked a lot about the tech sector cutting jobs. Now Goldman Sachs cutting 400 jobs in the retail unit. Morgan Stanley laying off 1,600 workers in the global workforce. J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, City, all planning to reduce bonuses reportedly by up to 30%. Yeah. What does that tell you? Well, first off, no one cares if a banker gets less of a bonus. Yeah. There's a small smile in the world. But I think the bottom line is this is the Fed doing their job. Why, you know, are they laying off? Is because the party's over. Last year and the year before, you had IPOs, you had SPACs, we had crypto going through the roof. That's true. That was amazing for banking. But now the punch bowl has been taken away and all that slowed down. So naturally, the banks, which hired you know, dramatically during the pandemic, they overhired. The they overhired. overhired. Right. So now we're just getting back to some normalization. But I think that also plays into the fact that the Fed did their job. You know, they've raised interest rates. It's cooled the economy off, which was a red hot economy. And now we're getting back to a, a place where the Fed next year, I agree with Kevin, they're probably going to even hike less come into the beginning of the year. Maybe by the end of next year, they could actually be cutting rates again which, again, would be you know, extremely uh, bullish for the economy. Well, that's certainly what the markets are telling us, that at some point in 23, we're going to see yeah. lower interest rates as opposed to higher. You've got food inflation, which continues to be persistent. You've got yep. inflation in services. I know some areas have certainly gotten crushed. Housing is in recession. You look at autos, you look at housing. These are the most sensitive to higher rates, and they've been impacted. But elsewhere, you have not seen a let-up in inflation. You have, not remember, food is a lag. It's a lagging indicator. In fact, even housing, it doesn't show up in the CPI number for more you know, months down the line, which you know, I would argue if you took housing out of the inflation equation, we'd almost be flat in terms of inflation growth over the last two months. So I think it, it's inevitable at some point food inflation is going to come down. But the other thing I mentioned about debt, and this is one thing I think no one talks about, is if you look at debt service versus uh, you know, what incomes look like right now, it's the lowest in 40 years. So yes, they've taken, we've taken on more credit card debt. It's higher, but debt service you know, in relation to income is extremely low, mm. meaning people can handle it. And if wages continue to go higher, which I think that we will, because I've talked about this labor shortage every week on your show. Yeah, absolutely. And we know inflation is coming down significantly. That means purchasing power for the consumer is going up. Kevin just mentioned that 70% of the economy is the consumer spending that looks very good for next year. I don't think we're going to land it all next year. So Forget you, soft landing, hard landing. You, you still, you don't think we're going to land it? <laughs> no. You're still buying stocks going into year end. You're, you're buying this yeah. uh, end of year rally. I haven't changed my tune all year. Yeah. Other strategists now are shaking their heads saying, man, you know, uh, maybe we need to get invested here because we've seen underinvested money managers. So I think, yes, I think your biggest risk here is a melt up.